Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at Alpha Flight 51, which also happens to be Jim Lee's first work for Marvel Comics. All right, so this is cool. Okay, so this, I should say, this is like his first interior work. Uh, a lot of times when artists start out, they'll give him like a pinup or just like something like that. I don't know if he did any of those, but this is definitely his first interior work, and it's very cool. Um, I just noticed that uh, it, the covers by Varda and Nolan, uh, so Kevin Nolan inking Hillary Varda, I'm assuming, and um, kind of a shame that uh, he didn't draw his first cover, but that's cool. Anyway, so uh, Jim Lee, superstar, went on to, I mean, he hit the ground running. His stuff, for his uh, early stuff was very solid. He improved very quickly, went on to Punisher War Journal, then Wolverine, and then the X-Men, of course, and the rest, as they say, is history. But um, <clears throat> anyone who watches my channel, and thank you for watching, please subscribe. It helps so much. I really appreciate it. Um, notice that I'm a huge John Byrne and Alpha Flight fan. I was always chasing the dragon after John Byrne left. I stuck with it, but, you know, it definitely was never the same for me um, with John Byrne. Bill Mantlow took over as writer and just, like, totally changed everything. <clears throat> They, Mike Mignola was the first artist, and then they had, like, a slew of, like, rotating artists, and not very great or inspired art, and then along comes Jim Lee, and he just really hits the ground running, very cool, like, very exciting, um, although this is not my favorite iteration of Alpha Flight, you've got Box in a weird costume, you've got White Sasquatch, that should not be his name, by the way, White Sasquatch, White Sasquatch, but, um, um, who is actually the body of Snowbird with the mind of uh, Walter Lankowski, but she's a woman and it was very strange. You've got Heather as Vindicator leading the team. The addition, the lamented addition of Purple Girl. <clears throat> Never understood this. She was such a prominent character in the book. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, you know, she's like a third-rate villain's daughter, and I don't know, whatever. It was kind of cool what Brian Bent just did with uh, Purple Man and Alias, but that's a story for another day. So Bill Mantlo is writing, Jim Lee penciling, woohoo! Um, Wills Portacio is anchor. Um, so cool that I think, I don't know if they knew each other before this. Um, I think they were, maybe were friends and trying to get in at the same time. Wills, uh took some inking gigs. Sometimes that happens. You know, he's such a great penciler. I love his art, but he's a great inker too. He did a lot of inking before he started uh, um, doing pencils. Janice Chiang, letterer, definitely a veteran of the industry. Bob Sharon, colorist. Carl Potts is editing, and Jim Shooter is still the chief. By the way, I love this Alpha Flight logo. I'm such a purist, and like I love the OG everything, but um, I definitely like that second Alpha Flight logo that they did. And I have to say, like, <clears throat> he, he is here to impress. I mean, Jim Lee definitely, you can tell he wanted to be a comic book artist. And he is giving, like, action and excitement. There's a lot going on in the splash page. So he's off to a great start. <clears throat> and then you turn open this double page spread, and he is just killing it with all this sweeping detail. Now, if this were my first comic book ever, I would have been so intimidated, could you imagine, like, double page spread, big scene, tanks, helicopters, blah, 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 I mean, you know, Jim Lee's insane with his detail and his backgrounds anyway, so maybe he was like, hell yeah, but I would have been like, oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself if I have to draw all this stuff, but right off the bat, I mean, obviously Jim would evolve into so much better, but his early, like, you know, rudimentary stuff is, like, a lot more exciting than some, like, seasoned veterans work at the time, so we definitely knew that there was a star on the rise here. As you can see, the, the colors are a little wonky. They're still using this flexographic printing, um, which seems to have lasted for years and years and years, uh, as they do these videos, um, because... It started while John Byrne was on the book with issue 2020. So 31 issues later, and we're still here. 
Now there's all these weird secondary characters that Bill Mantlo is adding and just like such a weird version of Alpha Flight that I just never like really cared about. Totally changed, ruined, or wrote out all the beloved like original Alpha Flight members that I really liked. Um, this is a cool shot here. Great shot. I mean, he just, he doesn't really let up. So it's kind of fun to see like the beginnings of a fresh new artist just really killing it, nailing it, and just sort of, uh, you know, owning their craft, I guess. A lot of people, you know, it seems like Jen Lee is like, and you're gonna have this, I guess, when you're like one of the most popular, famous, well-known artists in the industry. Like a lot of people don't like his current art. A lot of people don't like his art anymore. A lot of people say he draws the same faces. I think he is so solid. I love his art. I definitely, I don't pick up everything he gets because to be honest, it wasn't super exciting for him to be at DC. I really would love if he would do an arc of Wonder Woman, particularly if that arc was written by Chris Claremont. I think that would be really cool. Um, it feels like he's tackled pretty much everybody else. Like he did Batman and Superman and Justice League. You know, where's the Wonder Woman love? I think her 80th anniversary would have been the perfect opportunity for him to do something. And you know, it's not over yet. Um, the big celebration's coming up. It's 2021. She came out in 1941, 80 years of Wonder Woman, imagine that. But Jim, I do like the way Jim Lee draws Wonder Woman. I mean, we it's not like we haven't gotten any Jim Lee Wonder Woman, but I'd like a little more. <clears throat> also, it'd be cool if Jim Lee would do like some sort of weird, like a uh, Alpha Flight special or something just to sort of, I don't know, that would be kind of a neat event, wouldn't it guys? Like if uh, they had the artists go back to the books that they made their name on. Because I feel like Jim Lee definitely made his name on Alpha Flight. I mean, people really liked what he was doing, and he got really popular. He stayed on for a good while, and it definitely led to better things. Um, I want to say he went right to Punisher War Journal after this, and I definitely followed him because the art was just killer and really good. And then I want to say, like, he might have even inked himself on some of that. But as you can see, like, this is a lot of fun. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning. Um, he's giving us so much detail and so much power and just like everything you would want from a comic book artist. Um, he's got it all there. So as far as first issues go, I have to say this is pretty, pretty decent, huh? I mean, like I said, it's nothing compared to what we would know Jim Lee to become. But back in the day, it was very cool that artists could, you know, start out uh, and get jobs based on their potential and develop and hone their craft over the time of um, being on a series. And there is no better um, boot camp than drawing a monthly book, I would imagine, because, you know, it's really challenging, especially if you're not working with another writer to sort of, you know, be in the position where you're basically forced to draw things that you wouldn't um, have drawn yourself or, um, you know, thought of yourself. And definitely a thought process goes into uh, deconstructing a script and figuring out the story beats. And, you know, there's way more to it than just drawing pretty, pretty pictures, which is kind of ironic. Actually, it's kind of good to show this because, you know, Image Comics has such a bad rap of just all pinups and no backgrounds and blah, blah, blah. And I think Jim Lee is probably the least guilty of that. But as you can see, he's definitely got the skills and he can put in the work. So he definitely deserves respect because he is Jim frickin' Lee after all. Anyway, I have to say that uh, of all the artists to follow Byrne on Alpha Flight, um, Jim Lee was probably the best. So that was Jim Lee's first interior work for our Marvel, Alpha Flight number 51. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth checking out and adding to your collection. If you're a Jim Lee fan, it's a key issue. Thanks so much for watching. Like I said, please subscribe to my channel, hit like, uh, and share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.